Hello everyone, I'm here to talk about the new moon in Scorpio today, which also happens to be Samhain. Um, this is a time when uh, the veils are very thin and we can connect with our ancestors very easily. And something that has been coming up for me a lot lately is um, a lot of pain around that, to be honest with you. Um, I had pulled a card earlier this morning because I've been really having kind of an internal battle, I feel like, um, the past several days. This, um, this moon... <laughs> We can't talk about it without talking about, you know, how Mars is at 29 degrees Cancer and Pluto, opposing Pluto at 29 degrees Capricorn. And that feels like a lot of the tension. And um, and for me personally, this this moon is not far from my south node and, uh, and Pluto. So <clears throat> it's really intense. It's bringing a lot of stuff to the surface. And there's a lot in the collective chart that um, shows that as well. There are two kite formations in the sky, which I find really interesting. Um, to me, what that says is there's a lot happening behind the scenes for us in our favor. But I pulled a card before, um, before I came on today, and this has come up around other Scorpio readings as well. And um, it's hurt. Pass through past pain. And it's very much about um, honoring ourselves where we have been hurt, but then also not projecting that out and, and perpetuating more and more of it, right? So that can be kind of hard with Scorpio energy. Scorpio has that stinger, you know, the scorpion tail. Um, and I want to read the message from this card. It says, there are hurts that you have held on to that simply do not need to be a part of your life anymore. Today, I want to say to you, I'm sorry these things have happened to you. I want you to know that no matter how evolved we become, sometimes from the human perspective, some of these hurts are too much to comprehend or release for good. So with this being said, it's time for you to start being kinder to yourself for holding on to this pain. This is an essential time of self-nurturing and self-respect where you must place purposeful efforts into self-healing. Get back to basics, see the beauty in all things, and learn to love your whole self a little more every single day. So there's a lot here around, around um, compassion. And I also feel with Mars at this 29th degree of cancer, uh, how it could be bringing up a lot of mother wounds. And we also still have uh, Chiron and Aries, which is like the inner child, healing the inner child. So um, I think that there's there could be issues like that coming up as well. And all of this is so we can clear it because this is also a very magical time. Um, but if we're not focused on the right energy to manifest, then we kind of like, it feels like a wasted opportunity. So I feel like it's so, so, so important to allow ourselves to acknowledge what needs to be acknowledged and um, feel whatever emotions need to be felt and then to let it go and um, start kind of fresh, you know, like to plant seeds where there's this really beautiful, cleared out, fertile soil. And those seeds are going to gestate over the whole winter. And um, I can see them springing forth in the spring. So <clears throat> what's interesting is I had this book pop out at me this morning. It's called Daily Meditations for the Turning Year, The Celtic Spirit. And I turned to today's date because it has uh, something written for every day and today is uh, November 1st and it's about the assembly of peace <laughs> I almost have to giggle about this because um, 
this doesn't feel like a peaceful time in the outer world at all. <laughs> but it feels like this invitation for us to come to some sort of inner peace so that that is what we are perpetuating rather than more war, right? Um, the inner war that gets projected outwards. It's not about um, I'm right, you're wrong. It's about higher truths um, and expressing ourselves from our hearts and what we feel is actually in our best interest as human beings, not as uh, separate identities of you know, our different stories that we tell ourselves. Um, so let me see, I'm going to read the, the, um, last part of this, spend part of this day in assessing your place in life. Look at unfinished business, assess your current spiritual position, scrutinize your motives, clarify your commitments, recognize and discard inappropriate patterns that no longer serve you. Um, so I wanted to pull a few more cards. Uh, something else to mention. Where is it here? Oh, we have, we still have asteroid Lilith and Sagittarius. And she's conjunct Venus right now. And we have a Venus gate in a few days where Venus and the moon conjunct in Sagittarius. And um, this is really pointing to this heart energy. And right now, those two are opposing Jupiter and Gemini. Jupiter's in his opposite sign. He's in Gemini sort of um, to help us open our minds, be open to new information. And Lilith and Venus invite us into the underworld um, to see what are the real motivations behind what's happening on uh, in a bigger picture way. So um, actually, I'm going to pull a card from my... There's a different deck calling me, actually. Let's pull a card from uh, my spellcasting deck for this... Venus Lilith energy, Venus gate. And this Venus gate is of the heart chakra. Um, it's the evening star phase, which means that Venus is reclaiming uh, her parts at each chakra gate. And so this is a reclamation of our heart. And this is why I think, too, there's so much emotion coming up. Um, it's like a cracking open. I'm sorry, just dropped it. Let's see what dropped out. Inspiration. I love it the burning fire, that Sagittarian and Venusian energy. And look how she's just shining like a star in the darkness. It's interesting because I feel like her solar plexus is super lit up in this card. Um, but that really does, it looks like Venus de Milo almost. Let's see what this card says. I'm feeling it's, it's encouraging us to follow our inspiration, but to follow it from the heart, not from the head. Inspiration beckons you to trust in your imagination, for this is the gateway to real magic and a world that you wish to light up. Call upon the spirits of the air to stimulate your mind and illuminate any creative ideas. A flash of inspiration to bring about a brilliant revelation will change your course and is reflected in your thoughts and dreams. Focus and follow up on inventiveness and innovation. Allow your creativity to be expressed. Take long walks to clear your mind and allow nature to truly inspire you. So throw caution to the wind and watch as your visions manifest into reality so you too become someone to aspire to. And I think this is such a cool message because um, one of the ways to balance out Scorpio energy always is Taurus energy, which, which is Earth energy and like grounding and getting outside and really like enjoying the sensual pleasures that you can taste, touch and feel um, because Scorpio can almost like get lost in the, in the deep abyss, you know? Um, I also wanted to ask 
for a card from our ancestors today. And uh, I'm going to ask what message do they have that can help us bring peace to the world. And I'm already hearing bring peace to yourself. Let's see what else comes through. Oh my gosh. I'm not picking that many cards out. <laughs> Just had a bunch fall out. Let's see what comes up. Hagstone, energy shield, protection, inner strength. Ooh, I've been feeling this majorly. I don't know about you guys, but I've been feeling like I have to um, clear my energy field like over and over and over lately and just transmute so much. Look at that light shooting through the heart, through that hagstone. I'm going to read from this, read about this one too. Uh, let's see here. Hag stones or fairy stones? Oh, how cool. Uh, sorry. I just, the uh, Samhain is also when it's thought that the other world of the fairies is open. So hag stones or fairy stones are any type of stone that has naturally occurring hole through it, caused by the action of water over very long periods of time. These stones are sought after, treasured, and revered for their magical properties and are believed to offer protection to the person who holds them wears them or hangs or displays them in their home. They're also said to bring good luck. Many folk stories tell how hag stones have the capacity to act as a shield against negative energy and spells. The theory stems from an ancient belief about the power of water, whereby negative spells or magic lose their power upon meeting moving water. Since the hole in the hag stone was created by flowing water, the protection of that water remains within the stone and whoever holds it is protected by it. The Hagstone card is one of protection. It appears because you already are protected in your life or it's a call to take a moment to look at the ways you may be leaking energy or are the target of negative energy. This card isn't one to be afraid of though. Instead, see it as a message from the stones to look at your foundations and tighten up any ways you may be leaving yourself exposed so you can feel strong and secure as you go about your life. And this has definitely been coming up a lot lately um, around like setting boundaries and figuring out um, whose energy I want to be around and what kind of energy I need to um, have less of in my life. And also the information that we take in that we listen to and and paying attention to what state of mind it puts us in the other thing as well is and this comes up with for me with the hurt card is um just seeing how many people are under a spell of uh propaganda and media and um it's really painful to watch. <laughs> uh, and it's <clears throat> something that I've realized, this is very scorpionic. You feel, you feel it's painful and you're suffering because for one, you feel misunderstood, but two, you see how um, people are causing harm to themselves and to others because of that type of programming. But um, ultimately, there's a control aspect uh, with your concerns too. So this hurt card definitely feels like, how can you just honor your own truth <clears throat> and kind of surrender, um, surrender your worries to the great mother and know you're protected and hope for the best for the truth to come to light is what I'm feeling. And it always does. So I'm going to pull one more card from my Tree of Life Oracle. And um, I do want to go over the election. I've been doing a lot of uh, research in the charts, but I just kind of haven't really had the energy lately. So we'll see if I get around to it. If anything, I'll do a quick reading. I may not go as in depth as I had hoped to, but we'll see. Um, it's only a few days left. So, okay, one more card for this 
new moon in Scorpio, please. The moon. <laughs> Evolution, simplicity in the animal kingdom. And um, there's P the Pisces symbol. The Pisces fish coming up out of the water. Kefri, the beetle that transmutes death into life. And a really beautiful divine feminine energy, goddess energy in the center here. Um, I'm going to look, look up this card as well. The 29th path. <laughs> At 29, that's interesting. The 29th path for 29 degrees for Mars and Pluto. Something else I want to say. Actually, I think I'll save that for my election reading. There's a lot to talk about with Mars. Just know Mars is really important for the next few months. <sighs> All right. As the goddess of the moon rises from her bath, she's moving through the subconscious waters into awareness of her surroundings. The animals with her symbolize evolution as well as sensuality and protection. We all evolve, at least we'd like to think so, and we do it in many ways, emotionally, physically, and as a species. It's how we survive. Are you surviving or thriving? Are you heading in the direction you want to be heading in? And if not, what does your intuitive mind tell you needs to evolve? The moon's governorship over family matters could suggest a family situation needs your attention now. Is it a question of offering support or asking for it? Water and the moon are both instruments that unlock your ability to see through the veil. So your awareness of the astral world, scrying techniques, and intuitive knowing may be increasing and could be worthy of further exploration at this time. Ask yourself what subconscious patterning is stopping you from receiving the things you need and desire. What do you want? If it's a huge bath and a wolf, then double joy, you're able to see the future you. For now, focus on moving toward whatever you feel it is you're here to do without losing sight of the small everyday tasks and blessings that will get you there. The ebb and flow of the moon can help you chart the, moon, the small changes you need to make. A moon diary or journal will help you to make the most of the cyclic nature and offer a map for change. And this really brings up the, um, the inspiration card again. It's beautiful, beautiful energy. A lot of um, sort of repetitive imagery here too, like this burning heart, inspiration, desire. And uh, <laughs> it's funny, I just picked up this card that I thought I pulled, but it fell off the top of the deck. <clears throat> Weather the storms, let it change you, embrace the unexpected. It feels very powerful as well. And this one, what the heck? <laughs> There's all of these cards that I are like flipping out at me now. <laughs> Empowerment, courage, and commitment. Um, yep, so... Pass through the pain and then lean into all of this beautiful light that is transmuted from the dark subconscious. And know you're protected. That is the message that feels the loudest to me. Uh, and I think that it's important this time of year, you know, to just know that because it is a darker time of year. So I hope you guys are doing well and... Hopefully I'll be back soon with uh, some more readings. All right.